In this chapter, we're going to take a look at some of the core p basics of service operation, talk about service operations' role in supporting the business, in delivering value to customers, and we'll talk about some key underpinning principles that we are going to use to both support service operational activities and for operations teams to effectively support other parts of the life cycle in building services that we can effectively deliver. In this lesson, we're going to take a broad view of service operations, look at its role in the service life cycle, how we use service operational data and information to support other aspects of our services, and ultimately how we're going to work to establish clear purposes, goals, and objectives for our operational activities, establish clear scope for service operations, and talk a little bit about the value to the business that service operation delivers. When you look at the role of service operation in the service life cycle, this is really the moment of truth from the customer's point of view. Prior to this, we've spent time modeling services and service potential. We've designed services for customers, gone through a lot of transition planning and coordination to help bring those services out of the development environment and into the live production environment. But it's only really here when services become into operations that the customer begins to gain the benefits associated with the service. So what are the customer's expectations really at this point? That we're going to in fact deliver the service. The service that we built, the service that we transitioned, now is, becomes the service that we host and we actually need to deliver effectively on a consistent basis to the customers and be able to provide appropriate support for that service to keep it up and running and to keep it available for customer use. In order to support service operational activities, we're going to introduce a series of five processes and four functional groups to describe how we're going to do operations and, and coordinate and manage the delivery and support of services. We're going to talk about event management and its role in helping us have early warnings of potential incidents or problems in our infrastructure or just to maintain appropriate operational control of normally functioning services. We'll talk about incident management and its role in rapid restoration of service. When customers have service disruptions, they really only have one goal, to get back to work and to be able to use the service again so that they can continue to perform their work activities. So the incident management process is going to help us coordinate responses in a way that minimizes impact to the business and delivers those benefits. The request fulfillment process is going to help us deal with routine requests for service from our customers, facilitate workflow and approvals on their side, and facilitate our fulfillment of those service requests to make it both cost effective and in time effective for us to provision and deliver that service. The problem management process is going to help us understand and look at how we improve our overall infrastructure and applications. Where do we have unknown causes of incidents in our infrastructure, in our services? How do we find those causes? Identify what we'll call those known errors and then have those removed in a way that's going to improve the overall quality and availability of our services and drive down the cost of supporting those services over time. Lastly, the access management process is going to help us maintain appropriate access controls on our service, to have a consistent approach to how we provision accesses for services, how we transition and change accesses for services, restrict or remove that access, and ultimately how we monitor the identities of users on the services so that we ensure that we're providing appropriate access to the people who do require access and we're denying access to people who aren't supposed to have access to those services. The functional groups are going to work across the different process areas to provision first level, second level, third level support for those processes, as well as to enable us to maintain appropriate documentation and communications as we respond to certain things in the operational environment. Our service desk will be our first point of contact for inbound and outbound communications to the user community about IT services, about status of incidents and service requests, about changes and projected service outages, or just about how to better leverage and use the services to gain more business benefit. Our technical and application management teams are going to focus on maintaining stable infrastructure and stable applications and ensure that we have the appropriate knowledge, training, and documentation to maintain and keep those services up and running and that we're using that information when we design new services, when we make changes, or when we drive improvement activities so that we can maintain appropriate control of our infrastructure and applications. 
Lastly, IT operations management helps us essentially maintain what I would call eyes on glass, so that we're carefully monitoring the performance of services in the live environment, the facilities that we use to host our services, and that we make sure that we have immediate responses when operational failures occur. Let's take a look in more detail now at service operations and its role in supporting the life cycle. So if you consider what happens in the rest of the service life cycle, during service design, for example, the service level management process works with the customers and the various IT technical and functional teams to build and establish service level agreements. Here are the requirements for the service. Here are achievable targets for how we can provision and deliver that service. And then really, of course, it's the job of service operations to coordinate, support, and manage those services in a way that effectively meets those service level agreements. So when we think about the objectives of service operation, it's about coordinating processes, various common activities, in a way that delivers on those service levels and helps us manage and minimize the impact of outages to be able to deliver those agreed services and to be able to maintain both quality service performance and customer satisfaction with the quality of services we're delivering. When you consider the scope of service operation, it's extremely broad. Right? So, of course, it's, we're talking about all provided services. Some of these may be internally provisioned and delivered services that we host. In other cases, we may be talking about externally provided services that we contract with a third party to deliver. Of course, from the customer's perspective, it doesn't really matter to them who, in fact, is managing the hardware and the software and the applications. It's all IT to them. And so they're looking for us as service operation to provision and deliver and support those services regardless of who, in fact, is doing which pieces. Likewise, as we're managing not only the service operation processes, but we have to work collaboratively to support a number of the other service management activities around coordinating design, change, managing transition and other support activities in how we bring new services and changes into production, and ensuring that we have the right operational capabilities in place so that when services come into operation or when changes come into operation, that we're going to be able to deliver them successfully. Another key part of what we have to think about is what types of technology we need to put in place to manage our other technology. How we manage our systems and networks and how we look at and manage and monitor services end to end in a way that helps us do appropriate performance management, do appropriate incident and problem identification, and in a way that helps us ultimately deliver on those service levels. Lastly, of course, we're going to be working with an extremely broad array of different kinds of people, from very non-technical end users to very deeply technical enterprise architects and engineers. And so we need to be able to work with both service consumers and service providers in a way that enables us to facilitate relationships and deliver the right level of service across our technical and functional teams to support the customer's needs. So one of the good benefits associated with service operation is it's very highly visible to the customer. And so the value to the business is almost immediately evident. I get the services. Now, of course, keep in mind, as we've worked our way through the service life cycle, we've probably spent a lot of money already. We went through a whole bunch of strategic planning and strategy, modeling service values, making a decision whether or not to provision a particular kind of capability. In service design, we went and built or bought and integrated the various pieces to provision the service, how we're going to measure the service, how we're going to monitor the service, how we're going to manage it, and all those other things. As we worked our way through transition, we coordinated how we oversaw release, packaging, build and deployment of that particular change or those particular new services, but it's only at the moment of truth here in operations where we get to use the service. And so from the customer's perspective, the value is immediate. Now I get it. I get to have the service. And so the customer's basic expectation is really very simple. Keep the service available and up and running for me so I can use it. On the flip side, we have funding challenges because in many cases when customers look at the life cycle of a project to a create a service, for example, they have the expectation that once the service is live and in the production environment, it more or less runs in a steady state type of way. And of course, you know that that's not realistic. So being able to establish appropriate funding mechanisms to support service operational ongoing requirements and costs can be an ongoing issue that we're going to have to deal with and we're going to have to set appropriate expectations for with our customers.